headed from 10 yards out. Very unlike him. He's also just headed straight at the keeper. But there's a real good tempo to Liverpool so far. The threat from Palace we've seen so far from Eze. But he broke free. He was offside. Zaha went looking for him. He just went too soon as he headed towards the cop one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. But they are all over Palace, Liverpool. It's still Liverpool nil, Crystal Palace nil. So Rangers and PSV Eindhoven and Dutch football and Dundee United uh, before nine o'clock. Let's focus on Southampton next, though. Have they got themselves in this situation after just two games, Rory? Well, a lot of young players coming in and you worry that that's going to take time to kind of blend in. The, the, the profile of players that they've signed is not... And that's what, you know, that's what Southampton have done really well. We had Martin Simmons on uh, last season talking about kind of the way they look for, for talent. And you can see what they're doing. They, you know, taking Gavin Bazzuno and Romeo Lavia from City, players that were on the kind of cusp of the first team but are not going to play at Manchester City. They're going to give them a chance. That all makes sense. But you are taking a massive gamble there because they need time to, to settle. I think that they are, they would be encouraged by the fact that they came from 2-0 down against Leeds. That's a, that's a good thing to come from 2-0 down and not lose that game. There was a point after what an hour when Rodrigo got the second where you thought okay this is now quite bad for Southampton if it if it stays like this to have been beaten so heavily by Spurs and then to lose at home to Leeds with lots of young players that's not great um, so they'll have been encouraged to, to, to kind of at least pull a point out of that game the, overall you do look at them and wonder if it's a club that is is taking maybe one gamble too many or has kind of lost what, what, a what little. do you mean by gamble because well, because you, you know we talked with you know we've talked earlier at the top about manchester united what is their identity at well, least uh, at least southampton have an identity they do exactly yeah which means they, they can go and sign players that fit that profile that do the things that they they need them to do the problem is if they're all very young then you, you don't have to give them time to make mistakes because young players do make mistakes. I mean, if... It, that, that's how in, sorry, I was going to say, how integral is that philosophy, is Ralph Hasenhutl to that philosophy? Well, it, 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 it's key, isn't it? Uh, um, sorry, I've forgotten the guy's name who came on uh, last, last season from Southampton, but, you know, he was talking about the importance of... Uh, Ma of, of Martin... Of, Martin Simmons, the, yeah, Martin the chief Simmons. exec. He, he, when I saw him recently, he spoke very highly of you as well. Yeah, Let's just not, uh, go back to uh, Anfield because the, the deadlock has the deadlock has been broken, Jules. And it's Crystal Palace who have taken the lead here at Anfield. Absolutely unbelievable. They've hardly had a kick, but a counter attack has played wonders. Wilfried Zaha with the goal, one on one. Liverpool find themselves behind again after all those chances before he scored. The inquest, no doubt, will follow. But Crystal Palace have the lead here. Anfield is absolutely stunned. 32 gone. Liverpool nil. Crystal Palace one. On. Are they back underway, Jules, or are they still checking it? Uh, as far as I understand, the goal stands. They're just as a Crystal Palace player down receiving treatment. Some of the Crystal Palace players, including Wilfred Zaha, are taking a drinks break. I can't quite see who the Palace player is that's down, but he is receiving treatment, and the offside flag was down when it was scored, so maybe it is being checked, but we certainly aren't having a VAR check to our knowledge at the moment. OK, Liverpool nil, Crystal Palace 1. Back to Martin Simmons and how mm. integral Hassan Hootel is mm. to the philosophy, Chris. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And, and then we, we saw the story, I think it was last week, which came out about players not uh, happy with him, surprised he's going to be there. I think he, he changed his coaching staff, which I think is always a really interesting one. Um, the fact that he... They brought new coaches in and they talked about we need fresh ideas and what have you. And I suppose there's a lot of Southampton supporters out there who think, well, fresh ideas, you know, let's get a new manager in. But, you know, they have their model. They brought a lot of young players in who, you know, you'd have to Google. I think they've got a new head of recruitment, uh, Joe Shields from Manchester City, hence the uh, Bazuno and, uh, and Romeo Lavia uh, connection and, and, and the signings there. But I actually think the last couple of seasons that, 15th place is okay they have their model they have their plan and I, I just think there needs to be a bit of patience I think he tried to uh, I covered their first game against Spurs through pre-season I think he was trying this this uh, three at the back 
um, system this season where he always played the 4 2 2 2. You could say more twos, couldn't you? That's what a lot of people do. But then at, at the weekend when they were two down, um, he went back to the system, which he knew and, and worked for him last season, got back into it. It'll be interesting to see how that pans out. But I, I, I do hope that. There is a patience with him from the uh, from the Southampton support. There's a Southampton fan I know who say, you know, Ralph is Marmite, you know, with with the Southampton support. But they have their model. I think staying in the Premier League is, you know, is a massive achievement year in and year out for Southampton. So over the course, I think Ralph Hasenhutl has uh, has done a really good job. And you know, we're talking about get, getting rid of him after one game, two games. If you were going to sack him, sack him at the end of what? last season. Mm. Yeah, and, and and maybe there are some who think... By the way, um, Rob's internet connection has uh, dropped off, so we're trying to get Rob back. Mm. Um, he hasn't done a mica and lost interest after about the 90-minute <laughs> mark and then not talked for 10 minutes. He, uh, he's, he's trying to get his internet up and running. Um, they lost 10 of the final 13 in all competitions last season, Rory. There were a couple of big defeats in that <laughs> as well. There was a very disappointing, from the Southampton fans' point of view, home defeat to Crystal Palace and you did just wonder as they got to the end of the season whether whether that might have been whether there was any thought at that stage you know new investment in the club as well as we mm. talked about last season whether maybe there might have been a, a break at that stage yeah it's never felt to me like Hassan Huttle's done badly enough for them to feel they have to make a change but you're right that there was maybe a point at the end of last season where they could have said okay maybe this is something we could do let's think mm. about whether this is the right time, even if it's not enforced. I'd say, actually, for a bit, little bit longer than that, for maybe a couple of years, there's been a sense about Southampton, and I agree with Chris, that their lead finishes have been absolutely fine. There's no reason to get upset about it. They've not let anybody down. It's not been desperately disappointing. But you have sort of wondered a little bit whether they, they are they're, they're kind of as functioning as well as they could be within their model that... There's been a slight sense of drift, just that they're kind of a little bit, they're kind of okay with how they're doing. Yeah, but how, well, what can he do more then, Rory? Because I think maybe you have to, you have to look at. I think with that, and I, I hate saying sort of recruitment as an answer to questions, but I do wonder whether getting one or two in who just had that slightly higher profile, that slightly higher ceiling. That maybe feels like higher, it higher maybe. profile, but that's not on him, is it, Rory? That's no, not that's on, on the club. Him. That's on the because club. Yeah. The, that's on the club. And I get, I, re, I actually really like, I saw a piece, I think Henry Winter did, did it in the Times, about Palace trying to be the eye out of the Premier League. Just, you know, Palace sit in this incredible talent production zone in South London. They should be able to produce a, a homegrown team in, you know, five, ten years or whatever. But Southampton, I think it's really admirable and really creditable that they, that they stick to that model of we want to be the stepping stone club. And it's worked for them. They've been in the Premier League for, what, ten years now without going down to success for Southampton. That You can't quibble with that. But I just wonder if you do that after a while, as more teams come up, as other teams establish themselves, you are always going to be kind of treading water. And clubs that tread water tend tend not to survive that long because th there's no real space for that in the Premier League. And I think that is the issue with Southampton. There's just been this sense of everything's we're, we're OK with where we are. But you're we're talking about a change of model on. then, aren't you? No, not not a change of model. I think the, the style of play stays the same. The you know the forward thinking stays the same. In terms of in terms of recruitment, because if you if you look at the recruitment, I think it's only I may be wrong here, but it's only Joe Arebo who's to the mid twenties. I, mm. I think Romeo Lavia is what uh, eighteen. Bazunu's twenty. They got the um, Bella Kotchap who's who's twenty, and the young uh, Sekumara. I think he's 18, 19, 19, 19, 19, yeah. So so mm. you know that is their model. So. If but within then, that, you should have space for, for signing a couple of kind of 28, 29 year olds who are proven at that level. But Southampton have been in the Premier League for long enough to have enough money at their disposal to do that. To, and we know they're smart enough to do it. So I, that's the, but the, did, the, the did one thing. Did they not spend money on lacking. Salasu, who I, I know he scored a horrendous own yeah. goal against, uh, against Spurs, but eventually, you know, he, were they quite patient with that? And eventually. But again, he, quite uh, a young player. I, know, I mean, in fact, well, Salasu was only about 10 million quid. He wasn't a lot. But that's an identity. That's that's a model. Yeah, that's no, I, something to be proud of, isn't it? But if you, if you look at the clubs that that, that identity is drawn from, which is you know a lot of the best run clubs around Europe, so Ajax or, or RB Leipzig, you know Ajax have got Dusan Tadic, who obviously has a Southampton connection, who's thirty two, thirty three. They've got Daley Blint, who's about seventy now. They, you know, even Leipzig have got people like 
Kevin Campbell, who's been around the Red Bull clubs for ages and must be kind of knocking on 30, 31. Emil Forsberg, who's been there for years. These are players who kind of know the system and they have that experience that's really important. Get Ronaldo in. Okay. It's got a couple. Got a couple of, of, of comments on this. Johnny, the sack seems inevitable when you're the manager of a club for a number of years and there isn't sufficient investment from above. Ralph Hassenhutl has kept Southampton up year on year playing progressive football despite losing key men. Uh, football SW6, Hassenhutl's a great manager, but he's just reached the end of his Southampton cycle. Everyone gets there. The slander session on his name is ridiculous. Rob, Rob is, is back with us. Do you know, he's the 11th longest serving manager in English football. And actually in the Premier League, only Klopp and Guardiola are longer serving managers. So it brings us back to the life cycle of a manager at certain clubs, doesn't it? Yeah, he's to survive, hasn't he? <laughs> it's just seemingly, uh, yeah. you know, it does happen. And uh, Southampton have been very, very, you know, historically have changed their manager quite quite often in, in in the model that they've had they've you know the guys talk about models of signing players they had the continuity behind the scenes and it just feels now like they got rid of they had uh, Dave Watson there Kelvin Davis there Craig Fleming as Reed who've all moved on um, within the last 12 months and it's seemingly all the all the pieces have been moved away for that continuity, and the only one left now is the manager. And so it just feels like that that's the one that's going to go. They're a club, they're a team that do it in streaks. They do have a very good run, and then a horrendous run for ten, twelve games, and they're in seemingly they well they have one win in twelve at the end of last season, and haven't started particularly well this season. Had a, had that fight back at the weekend. Yeah. It, it, You'd, you'd be feeling it, I think, if you were Ralph Hassel Hooker right now. But you, you know, with the change of, th- change of coaches, I, I, I've got to say, I find this really interesting because if, if we all agree that, you know, the last couple of seasons, Southampton finishing 15th is, you know, OK, why, why change? Why make those changes? Who's, whose decision is it to make those changes? Mike, my, my, this is just a guess. But I would imagine that the way Southampton will do it, and we know that just Martin Simmons told us that they that they will have a list of potential candidates to replace Hassan Huckle who fit fit what they want to do and who they want to be, which is what a club should do. They should always be aware of, of their options. Um, I would imagine they'll be looking at kind of things like underlying performance data, not necessarily results, but there'll there'll be certain key variables, key metrics that they look at to say, okay, actually, we. We are trying just as hard, but we this is a kind of organisational failure. You know, the defence wasn't right or whatever. So we know that the manager hasn't lost the players. They're still working for him, but there's maybe some sort of issue. Or can you change for change's sake, then? I think you can change to keep things fresh. I think that's legitimate. And in, in football, generally, I think people are quite wary of it. But I think, and everyone wheels out Charlton, but I think there is a point where it's valid to say, do you know what, This we sense that this is... We have the sense, or we can see from looking at various things that we might analyse, we can see that things are fading here. So we need to act now to avoid a proper spiral. I think that is legitimate. I think that, and that is the sort of thing that I imagine a club like Southampton would be willing to contemplate. Well, they've done. They've done I know that there are lots of different people involved now, but they did it before, didn't they? Do you remember when they got rid of Nigel Atkins? Everybody was like, "Well, hang on, he's he's got promotions through two divisions, got them into the Premier League." And now Atkins was replaced by Mauricio Pochettino. So it works out for them in, in that sense. The one thing, though, Chris, and this is in the... In Who the knows Mayo. where they would have been had they stuck with Nigel Atkins, though? Yeah, well, that's a very good point. Um, the, 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 the Daily Mail is saying that a source is saying that he, he has no relationship with some players, drops them without any thought. Um, and if they have an issue, then, then he isn't talking to them. Um, right, well, you know... <laughs> So, uh, uh, yeah, well, well, I mean, I, yeah, he came out after the game, didn't he, at the weekend, sort of, uh, you know, fighting his his corner in that respect. Um, I don't, I don't like these stories. I, you know, if it is true that players are putting the boot into him and saying, you know, we need a new manager in place, maybe a bit of self reflection mm-hmm. and looking at themselves first and foremost. Have they been doing enough? Have they been doing enough as a group of players? That would be the. Uh, the sensible approach uh, there. So I, I think it, this is this is so early for this story to come out, whether there's any truth in it 
or not. But, you know, you can't be talking about sacking a manager. When you've planned for pre-season, when you've brought these players in who, you know, Hasenhutl's supposed to develop. As I say, if you're gonna if you're going to get rid of the manager and you've made that decision for the better of the club and you feel things are a little bit stale, then do it at the end of last season. Have a clean break and uh, and move on in that respect. Well, you talked about Martin Simmons and you talk about someone who I spoke to a while ago under previous owners and uh, he talked about, I said, what's your biggest fight? And he said, keeping the, the owners patient and just <laughs> keeping a lid on their expectations. They want success now. They've eventually sold, but... The new owner, he's kind of barely seen his team win since buying a club in January. So you can like get him to the point where um, chronologically, he's, he's he's owned the club for the, pretty much all of this year and, and barely seen the team win. So he's patient. He must be getting worried at some point as an owner of a club as well. Five Live Cricket from nine. Uh, five Live Boxing from ten uh, with uh, Bunsy. Um, there's European Championship Athletics in Munich this evening. 10,000 metres uh, about to get underway, featuring the Commonwealth champion Eilish McColgan. Catherine Merry is there. <laughs> 